Now that we talked about speciation and how species form, let's talk about how we identify what a species is. Species are the fundamental unit for evolutionary biology. They're how we look at how things change over time. We can follow one population or species, look at how it changes, and then eventually it might become more than one species. But even though that this is so fundamental and important, we don't actually agree on what these definitions are. When we're talking about how we define what a species is, we refer to the word species concepts, and there are a lot of different species concepts. Um, some of the names here that I've put, these are just some of the most common ones. The most common ones that we will be talking about are the biological species concept and then the phylogenetic species concept. There are, of course, many others. Um, these were proposed because people were looking at different types of data. Were you looking at real species? Uh, or living species versus fossil species? Are you looking at sexually re reproducing species or asexually reproducing species? It's uh, one part of why it's complicated is different species do different things. Fungi are very different from animals, are very different from plants, are very different from bacteria. And that's part of the reason why it is so hard to agree on a single concept because there's just so many different forms of life and they're doing different things. Um, but species concepts, uh, what we're talking about here is, first, most biologists agree that species as a unit are real, that the, what we mean here is, uh, are they meaningful biological groups? Higher levels of organization in our taxonomy, such as a family or an order, isn't a real group necessarily, um, but it is still useful to use these um, for, for, so we can organize um, all of the different species. Um, it, and species are the only, you know, real ones. Even though we agree that this is a real category, there are lots of different ideas on how to define a species. So let's talk about some of the most popular ones. By far, the most popular one is the biological species concept. However, it is not more or less biological than any other concept we are talking about. This is just success in marketing. Um, this concept was championed by Ernst Mayer. Um, this is defined as species are groups of actually or potentially interbreeding natural populations that are reproductively isolated from other such groups. So the key here is we are focusing on reproductive isolation. Can you prove two populations are reproductively isolated? If so, then they are different species. However, there's a lot of ambiguity here and there are a couple problems which let's talk about. First, asexual organisms. If there's no sex happening in the species, well, you cannot use this concept to define them. The biological species concept is only applicable to sexually reproducing organisms, so that's only some, well, most of animals um, and some fungi. You also can't use it with fossils. You can't put two fossils in a box and see what happens because they're dead. <laughs> Um, there's also problems with ring species, like how do we deal with ring species? Each population can breed with each other, but the ones on the end cannot. Also, what do you do about hybrids? So here we have two different genera of primates. We have Papio, um, generic baboons, and then Therapithecus or gelatas, sometimes called gelata baboons. We know these guys have been separated for about 5 million years. That's not an insignificant amount of time um, due to a pretty good fossil record. Um, they're, you know, pretty fairly distinct from each other, and yet they still have viable hybrids every now and then. Um, generally, there will be a hybrid individual, and then it will go back into one of the other populations. So there are actually small levels of gene flow, even though they've been separated for about 5 million years. That's a pretty big problem. Because there are these recognized problems, problems with the biological species concept, also, I personally don't really like defining things just by finding are they different or not. I find I prefer species concepts that emphasize why things are the same species and why species stay the same. Another common one is the phylogenetic species concept. So here it defines species as the smallest diagnosable cluster of individual organisms within which there is an ancestral pattern of ancestry and descent. So here we are emphasizing different things. So now we're trying to identify, yes, these things are the same, but now we're looking at diagnosable traits. We're looking for specific phenotypes that we can observe. 
Um, and we're specifically um, noting that there's a pattern of ancestry and descent. So this is recognizing that species are a lineage, so it will stretch um, for a period of time. Um, the phylogenetic species concept emphasizes the fact that you can distinguish different species from each other, and also that descent from a single ancestor. Sometimes people like to propose that we should use different words to define fossil species because it's harder to, to investigate fossils in the same way as living species. So you might hear the names paleo species, chrono species, or morpho species. Generally, most biologists agree that these terms are not necessary, but if you encounter them, that's why. Lastly, some people want to get away with the idea of species altogether. Or, well, not altogether, but at least when we're talking about politics and how species come into politics. This is when we're talking about conservation and who is important to conserve in the first place. So the idea of evolutionarily significant units is we're trying to figure out, okay, which populations are important and significant for evolution and which are important for us to put the energy and resources to conserve. When we're right now, we mostly use the biological species concept to determine um, what actually can make it onto a conservation list. The biological species concept is a little bit broad, so there are going to be fewer species, and that means important populations might get left off and not conserved, and that would be pretty sad. So here are some different um, tarsier species, um, but if we're considering all of these ones on the bottom to be the same, then they might not all be conserved. So the important thing here is we want to make sure that when we are applying species concepts to conservation, that we are not ignoring important variation. Because especially when we want to preserve the outside world, we want to make sure we're preserving the evolutionary processes and not the species themselves. Because if we are simply trying to preserve things as they are right now, we are creating the world's largest outdoor zoo. It is more important to make sure we are conserving the processes of evolution so that species continue to change into the future. So what are the different species concepts and why do we have multiple concepts in the first place? 